Welcome to Maglev Train. Uh, something's happened to those mountains. They're so different looking. Now this looks familiar. This is how I had the mountains before. They had no trees, and the grass and snow were very simplistic. They were also grouped up into single image layers. The new mountains are not only individualized, they're also well forested. And if you look closely, you can see that different types of trees come and go as the elevation increases until they reach the timber line. Even the snow and grass, the snow for example here, is also in batches where it looks a lot more realistic than what I had before. Moose and Taiga was originally part of the inspiration behind needing a change. If you look closely, you can see how badly the mountains here clash with the grass here. I was originally planning on using ground decals to kind of make it blend in better, but I rejected that idea. When I began to travel, I got to see how things really were, such as how foresting abruptly ends at the timber line. It also scales with the cosine of the latitude and linearly with elevation. In addition to that, localized effects also affect how the foresting is. The end result? Significantly more realistic mountains. Maglev Train is at a high elevation and only a medium low latitude. Latitude has a significant impact on how the foresting is. Moose and Taiga is at a high latitude and a medium low elevation. And because of the latitude being so high, there's very little room for foresting. Earlier, at high elevation, the old layer base system really stands out. While it is easier to use and it uses roughly about the same amount of memory, these mountains are just so big that it makes better sense to individualize them. Keverin Desert is on the boundary. I also didn't just individualize them, I also made them bigger. And if you look closely, I've also made an enhancement on the lighting. Whoa, all these crazy platforms over here. That one stops, and up I go to the next section. Gotta love platforming, you know. I also improved the lighting. Originally I used GIMP's tile-based system, but it had a lot of limitations that prevented me from being able to use it in an effective manner, such as always having a seam, not being tiled, and so forth. So, I made my own algorithm. The end result? Much better. With the mountains being individualized, the parallax scrolling effects are much stronger, causing a better 3D effect. After all, that's what Platform Master's specialty is, taking parallax scrolling to an extreme never seen before. From this extreme height, can you see where the mountain at 1120 scaling units is? Not sure? It's right here. It's so hard to see because it's right at the edge of visibility. Against the sky background, the mountain at 1120 is very easy to see. It's this one right here. And just in case you're wondering, Carnival Esta, Centus Mountains, and Mount Centusi are also getting all these mountains. The other worlds, such as like Keverin Desert, they're only going to get foresting. Well, for the desert, that'd just be the very far ones. Geronimo! When you first start up the Centus Mountains, you'll be dominated by a mountain at only 96 scaling units. The reason is, you're between mountains in a valley, so you have very short distance to go in order to get into the background, in effect. However, when you get up to the peak, it's a much greater distance to get out to the next mountain. Of course, reworking the mountains on this means I have to rework all the ground decals, and towns like Amorous, for example, will have to get moved. The town of Ryanara and Lake Ryan, however, are not going to be affected. Even beautiful Carnivalesta is getting its mountains updated, which also includes Hersiac, which is this. I have a really nice plan intended for Hersiac, and I'm also thinking of putting another similar such town closer in, like maybe like here or something. Mount Centusia will also be getting updated mountains in pretty much about the similar way. However, one thing to note is there will also be a mountain at 64 scaling units, which will be about four times as fast as this one would be moving, and it would also be a shorty. 
And then I have another one intended at 128 scaling units, which is half the distance as this, so it'll be moving about twice as fast. Overall, it's vastly more realistic than what I had before. As far as other changes needed, for Moose and Taiga, for example, I need a waterfall on this cliff here, and this texture, by the way, is just a temporary placeholder. And, in addition, this river here will become a lake, well, kind of a lake that comes out like that or so, and you need to regenerate the trees to better match how they are on the mountains. For the most part, otherwise, this world would be finished. It's just a couple of things here and there. Maglev Train still has a lot of adjusting yet to be made yet. For one, these trees are actually just temporary placeholders. They'll better match the mountains. This road will have a construction zone present, along with a lot of signs for, like, distances to the nearest towns or where turns are. But this won't actually all be just nothing but forest, either. It'll also have things like barns and farms, complete with sheep, horses, cattle. It'll have ponds off in the background. It'll have roads going out into the distance as well. Also with signs indicating how far you gotta go to get to the nearest town, like Sidus, for example. It'll have a lot of detail, and this world will be pretty much exactly like as if you're traveling through the world. The game world, that is. Anyway, this video was created by Alilia. Thank you for watching.